In the dark, smoky streets of New York, a lone man drives his taxi, embarking on a journey that goes far beyond the city's roads. Taxi Driver, Martin Scorsese's 1976 masterpiece, is not just a film but a journey into the human soul. But what lies behind the scenes of this iconic movie? Let's discover together these surprising facts that shape the making of this unsettling urban portrait. To immerse himself in the role of Travis Bickle, Robert De Niro adopted an extremely realistic approach. The actor, already known for his immersive method acting, chose to live the experience of a real taxi driver in New York. For two weeks, De Niro drove a taxi through the city streets, fully immersing himself in the daily life of a driver. This period was particularly dangerous for taxi drivers, with New York in 1975 characterized by a high crime rate and social tensions. De Niro's first-hand experience on the streets of New York contributed to forging one of his most memorable performances, bringing a raw and authentic realism to the screen. The story of Paul Schrader, the screenwriter of Taxi Driver, is almost as fascinating as the film itself. Raised in a strict Calvinist family, Schrader did not have the opportunity to see a movie until he was 17 years old. This delay in exposure to the world of cinema only fueled his curiosity and hunger for cinematic knowledge. The first movie he saw was The Absent-Minded Professor from 1961, an experience that left him disappointed but did not dampen his growing interest in cinema. This unique background contributed to forming a worldview and an approach to screenwriting that are deeply original, clearly reflected in Taxi Driver. One of the most subtle but powerful scenes in Taxi Driver is when Travis Bickle calls Betsy to try to remedy their failed date. As Travis speaks on the phone, the camera slowly moves away from him, an unusual move for the time. Scorsese explained that this movement symbolized the embarrassment and rejection so intense that even the camera couldn't bear to watch. This directorial choice adds a level of emotional depth to the scene, underscoring Travis's sense of isolation and despair. The character of Travis Bickle in Taxi Driver has roots in reality, partly inspired by the figure of Arthur Bremer. Bremer was sentenced to 35 years in prison for the attempted assassination of politician George Wallace in 1972. Like Travis, Bremer was a lonely and disturbed individual who documented his thoughts and frustrations in a personal diary. While the story of Taxi Driver is purely fiction, Bremer's figure provided screenwriter Paul Schrader with a starting point to explore themes of alienation, repressed anger, and violence. Bremer's story adds an additional layer of complexity to the film's narrative, highlighting how fiction can reflect and question disturbing aspects of reality. Jodie Foster, who played the young prostitute Iris, was only 12 years old during the filming of Taxi Driver. Despite her young age, Foster was already an experienced actress, having participated in numerous television shows and films. However, given the adult and often disturbing nature of the film, special measures were taken to ensure her psychological well-being. Before being allowed to participate in the film, Foster had to meet with a psychologist to confirm her maturity and ability to handle the themes addressed in the film. During filming, a social worker supervised Foster's scenes and ensured she was not present on set during the filming of dialogues or scenes inappropriate for her age. Additionally, for some of the bolder and more violent scenes, Foster's older sister was used as a body double. The character of Iris has a particularly interesting creation story. Screenwriter Paul Schrader found his inspiration for this character in a rather unusual way. During his stay in New York for the pre-production of the film, Schrader spent a night in a bar where he met a young prostitute. This chance encounter had a significant impact on the reworking of the character of Iris. The girl, who turned out to be underage and drug-dependent, provided Schrader with a direct and raw view of the lives of these young women on the streets of New York. This experience deeply influenced the portrayal of Iris in the film, adding a layer of realism and authenticity to the character. To prepare for the role of Iris's protector, Harvey Keitel adopted an intensive research approach. Keitel, known for his methodical commitment to preparing for his characters, sought to speak with real protectors to better understand the mindset and dynamics of their world. Initially, he tried to approach them through the prostitutes of Times Square, but without success. Eventually, he managed to find a former protector who helped him prepare for the role, providing him with valuable insights and advice on how to portray the character in a credible and respectful manner. The making of Taxi Driver owes much to the success of another film, The Sting. Before the triumph of The Sting at the box office and the Oscars, producers Michael and Julia Phillips had already shown interest in the screenplay of Taxi Driver. However, at that time, neither they nor Martin Scorsese or Paul Schrader had enough influence in Hollywood to convince a studio to finance a film with content as dark and as provocative as Taxi Driver. The success of The Sting changed all this, giving Phillips not only considerable prestige but also a deal with Columbia Pictures. 
This success, combined with the growing reputation of Scorsese and Schrader and the engagement of De Niro, transformed Taxi Driver from an unlikely project into a concrete cinematic reality. A fascinating aspect of the making of Taxi Driver is the coincidence between Robert De Niro and the character of Travis Bickle. Before becoming famous, De Niro had thought of writing a screenplay about a lonely man wandering through New York with weapons, dreaming of committing an assassination. This idea, which remained only a hint, turned out to be surprisingly similar to the plot of Taxi Driver. Dustin Hoffman, already an established star in the mid-70s, had the opportunity to play the lead role in Taxi Driver. However, Hoffman declined Scorsese's offer partly because he was not familiar with the director's previous work and was not convinced by the proposal. Later, Hoffman expressed his regret for not accepting the role, which became one of the most emblematic in Robert De Niro's career. The making of Taxi Driver required considerable financial sacrifices from its cast and crew. Robert De Niro, who was emerging as a leading star after the success of The Godfather Part II, accepted a fee of only $35,000 for his role in Taxi Driver, despite being offered up to $500,000 for other projects. Screenwriter Paul Schrader also accepted a reduced fee, about the same amount De Niro received, despite having sold a previous screenplay, The Yakuza, for 10 times that amount. Other main cast members, like Sybil Shepard and director Martin Scorsese himself, worked for lower fees than their usual rates. These financial sacrifices reflect the passion and commitment of the cast and crew in bringing this powerful and provocative story to the screen, despite budget constraints. Bernard Herrmann, the legendary composer known for his collaborations with Alfred Hitchcock, was initially reluctant to work on Taxi Driver. Herrmann had already had an extraordinary career, having composed music for films like Vertigo and Psycho. Initially, he was not interested in collaborating with Scorsese, a director who was still emerging at the time. However, after reading the screenplay of Taxi Driver, Herman changed his mind and agreed to compose the soundtrack. The result was one of his last and most memorable works, the haunting soundtrack that perfectly captures the tense atmosphere and tormented psychology of the protagonist. Tragically, Herman died the night he completed the recording of the soundtrack, making his work on Taxi Driver a moving final testament. The final scene of Taxi Driver is famous for its graphic violence and intensity. Originally, this brutality led the film to receive an X rating reserved for films with extremely adult content. However, Martin Scorsese, eager to make the film more accessible to the general public, decided to desaturate the colors in the final scene, particularly making the blood a dark brown rather than bright red. This visual change not only allowed the film to obtain an R rating, but added a sense of raw realism and an almost surreal quality to the scene, making it even more impressive. Before Taxi Driver, Albert Brooks was known primarily as a brilliant stand-up comedian, an artist who had honed his craft on stage with witty jokes and acute observations of everyday life. However, it was Martin Scorsese who recognized a different potential in Brooks, deciding to entrust him with the role of Tom, Betsy's skeptical colleague. Brooks' entry into the world of cinema through Taxi Driver was unconventional. Having no traditional acting training, Brooks brought a fresh and spontaneous approach to the set. His experience as a stand-up comedian proved to be a valuable asset, allowing him to improvise and create dialogues on the spot, a talent that Scorsese encouraged during filming. A curious anecdote about the production of Taxi Driver is Martin Scorsese's appearance as an actor, a role he took on due to an injury to another actor. Originally, the role of the obsessive passenger in the taxi, who describes in detail how he wants to kill his wife, was assigned to George Mamali, an actor who had already worked with Scorsese in Mean Streets. However, Mamali injured his back working on another film, and Scorsese decided to replace him at the last minute. This unexpected choice led Scorsese to direct himself in one of the most disturbing scenes of the film, with De Niro acting almost as an acting coach for him during filming. Taxi Driver is known for its raw and realistic portrayal of New York in the 70s, an atmosphere accentuated by a real event, a garbage collector strike. During filming in 1975, the city of New York underwent a strike by sanitation workers, leading to a significant buildup of garbage on the streets. This context provided the film with a naturally dirty and disordered set, which fit perfectly with Scorsese's vision of a decaying and declining New York. In an interview released at the time of the film's release, Martin Scorsese described Taxi Driver as a feminist film. This statement may seem surprising given the violent and dark nature of the film, but Scorsese explained that his work explored machismo taken to its extreme consequences. According to the director, the film highlights the problems of some men who oscillate between seeing women as goddesses or as prostitutes, thus exploring gender dynamics and the treatment of women in society. In this sense, Taxi Driver can be seen as a commentary on toxic masculinity and its repercussions. Sybil Shepard, who played the role of Betsy, was a controversial figure during the production of the film. 
After success in The Last Picture Show, her career underwent highs and lows, and her relationship with director Peter Bogdanovich, who was married, and her subsequent professional choices made her a discussed figure in Hollywood. On the set of Taxi Driver, Shepard faced difficulties both in acting and in relationships with other cast members. Producer Julia Phillips and Scorsese himself often had to help her with her lines, and it is said that De Niro showed frustration and hostility towards her. The cinematic shootout sequence in Taxi Driver represents one of the most intense and memorable moments of the film, a true masterpiece of direction and editing. The realization of this scene required an extraordinary commitment, both in terms of time and creative resources, and took place over three months in a rundown condominium in New York. The set chosen for the shootout was a dilapidated building, which perfectly reflected the bleak and desperate atmosphere of the film. To create the famous overhead tracking shot that concludes the scene, Scorsese and his team adopted a bold and innovative approach. They decided to trace a path in the floor of the apartment located on the upper floor using a chainsaw. This technique also added an element of raw realism, making the building even more shaky and dangerous. The complexity of this sequence required exceptional skill in editing, and it was here that Steven Spielberg, a friend and colleague of Scorsese, came into play. Spielberg contributed to composing the sequence, bringing his experience and unique eye for detail in visual storytelling. The collaboration between Scorsese and Spielberg in the editing room was a meeting of creative minds, resulting in one of the most powerful and unforgettable scenes of the film. One of the most memorable moments of Taxi Driver is undoubtedly Travis Bickle's self-interrogation in front of the mirror, culminating in the now legendary line, You talking to me? This scene has become an icon of cinema, but few know that it was the result of Robert De Niro's brilliant improvisation. During filming, De Niro found himself having to fill a void, a moment when the script did not give precise indications. It was then that, drawing from his observation and experience, De Niro pulled out what would become the most quoted line of the film. Curiously, the inspiration for this line came from a Bruce Springsteen concert that De Niro had attended shortly before. During the concert, Springsteen, responding to the cheers of the audience, jokingly used the phrase, You talking to me? This minor detail, seemingly insignificant, took root in De Niro's mind, which he then transformed into a moment of pure cinematic magic. Taxi Driver challenges us, disturbs us, and fascinates us, leaving an indelible mark on popular culture. Its influence extends well beyond the boundaries of the big screen, touching music, literature, and even fashion. It is a film that invites us to reflect on themes such as loneliness, alienation, and the search for meaning in a chaotic world. Now, we would like to hear your voice. What is your favorite moment of Taxi Driver? Is there any aspect of the film that particularly struck or influenced you? Share your thoughts in the comments, and to get into the spirit of Travis Bickle, why not start your comment with, You talking to me? We are curious to know what you think of this cinematic masterpiece that defined an era and continues to influence the world of cinema. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for being with us, and see you in the next one!